I am the glob glow gub gallop, the schwabble double wobble gubble flibber blubber blub. I'm full of swimble glibber kind. I am the yeast of thoughts and mine. What is that? What the f is that? What is that? Joshua and the Promised Land, an amateur animated passion project that was created mainly by a single person who did it for the glory of God. Uh, if, if God fights with us, who can stand against us? Stravinsky and the Mysterious House, an amateur animated passion project that was created mainly by a single person who did it for the glory of God. If you trust her, and tell her everything that is on your heart, then she will help you. She will go to the great Elohim, and he will forgive you. What's going on here? Is this some kind of biblical rite of passage? That in order to be a pastor, you must create an animated movie about God, all by yourself. My child, it is written that you must not lie nor commit murder, and you alone must create a feature-length animated film all by yourself. Uh, uh, God? I don't know how to animate. Well, too bad. Get to work! Also, this is the most requested video I have ever had. So, uh... <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's go over my five points. Voice acting. The singing leaves a lot to be desired, but the voice acting itself is not terrible. Now, there are times where they talk way too fast. Hey, Sir Troll, please don't run away. There he goes. He's weird, definitely. Editing. So I don't know if this was done in post-production or if it was animated this way, but the camera angles? Oh my god. They are constantly moving. There's never a moment where the camera stays still. It's always swiping or panning into something. Hello, Mr. Troll. My name is Stravinsky. These are my friends, Harold, Klopstock, and Elbow. What are you doing in my house? This is your house? Well, I do live here, don't I? Dialogue. Eh, it can get kind of clunky and boring at times, but nowhere near as bad as Joshua in the Promised Land. Uh, I really think we should leave now. Me too. Did you say something, Klopstock? No, I did. Galbert Bibberkrall. Animation. At first glance, it doesn't look that good. The textures, the movement, the lip syncing, it's quite messy. But after learning about the origin of the film, it kind of makes sense why it looks this way. Now, that doesn't mean it looks fantastic though, because uh, <laughs> it doesn't, it sucks. Oh, oh. Story. So the story is actually based on an audio drama from the 1980s. It's a six part series and the movie itself is focusing on episode three, which is why some things are out of context. There's a moment where the characters freak out about a guy called the Rat King and it came out of nowhere. Just, uh, oh no, it's the Rat King. He's bad and apparently he's a character. According to this interview, the movie was mainly a passion project and was something that he had always wanted to do. Also, the guy is a big time Christian and desired to feature the love of Christ in the film. Stravinsky is an animated film that uh, uses some of the parables of Jesus and uh, retells them in, in, a, in a new way uh, in, in the fantasy world. One of my initial reasons for getting into animation is because I'm a Christian and I, I basically I want to use um, use media and animation to in a way share share with other people the experience of my faith. I was hoping to in a way learn animation skills and then tell stories that would be interesting and engaging to, to people who don't know God and don't know Jesus in, in the Bible yet. He was also inspired by other Christian animated movies, like The Pilgrim's Progress. But uh, I mean, come on, looks super lame and boring to- Whoa! After that I will show you how wrong you are. You will never rise again, not in this world or the world to come. Looks like a Dark Soul boss. The guy who made this movie is the same guy who made Five Nights at Freddy's. That's right, Freddy is Irish Catholic. Like I said, 
This movie is based on a six-part audio drama from the 1980s, one that David grew up with and also loved. That's why he made a movie about it. Oh, and a fun fact. Apparently, the guy who actually made the audio drama knows about the current popularity of the Globgo Gabgalab, and he's totally cool with it getting memed on. I am the Globglo Gabgalab, the schwabble double wobble gabble for the blah blah blah. I'm full of schwibble glibber kind. I am the yeast of thoughts and minds. A big part of David's project was to include Christian symbolism, how the Scarlet Queen is Jesus, Elohim is God, and the Rat King is Satan. Also, books are bad, and they only serve as temptation and idolatry, which is kind of ironic. When you go to David's site, it says that Stravinsky and the Mysterious House was inspired by Narnia and the teachings of Christ, which are, uh, <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, both books. So yeah, children, don't read books, unless it's the Chronicles of Narnia, or Lord of the Rings, or the Bible. It's just so important to be careful what you read. I was gonna come down pretty hard on this movie, but I read the entire interview, and eh, you know, I'm gonna back off a bit. Not completely, but I will give this guy some wiggle room. Ugh, ugh no, not that kind of wiggle. Mmm, splendid. Simply delicious. I can appreciate that David worked hard on this film, that he had a drive to learn new skills, like animation, and make something of it. Not many people can do that. That doesn't mean the movie is safe from criticism, though. It still sucks. I thought it was absolutely excellent. That was an amazing piece of work. Bullshit. Um, I thought it was incredibly evocative. It created a, a kind of a universe. Bullshit. I thought all the voiceovers were amazing in it. Um, yeah, really good. Bullshit. All right, so we start off with a camera pan towards a map that looks like it's from Middle Earth. I mean, exactly like Lord of the Rings. A part of the vast territory ruled by the great Elohim. And uh, you gotta love this. The Troll and Giant District. Eh, what? Is there a Dwarf Midtown? Perhaps an Orcville? The Commonwealth of Virginia? Yeah, I was trying to do a thing with like fairy plus Virginia, eh, whatever. Boo! So we hear the narrator tell us about Stravinsky and his friends. How Stravinsky is a mole, even though he looks nothing like a mole. Stravinsky, the little mole, lived in the land of Ram. The little mole. Ah, and here comes the intro credits, spoiling the entire movie. One day on a walk after school, Stravinsky and his three friends, Harold the Hedgehog, Klopstock the Tortoise, and Elbow the Blue Rabbit. God, their names suck. All right, you're Lopslock, Dick Buck, and uh, Ginny Bip Bip Bip. <laughs> I don't know what that last one was. So the friends come across an old abandoned house, or as the narrator likes to say, dilapidated. Hidden amongst tall trees and in the middle of an overgrown garden stood an old dilapidated mansion. What kid is going to know what the word dilapidated means? Uh, Joseph, I wouldn't go on the playground if I were you. The structure seems dilapidated. That's spooky. Shall we go in? Better not. It might be enchanted. Chicken? I'm not a chicken, I'm a rabbit. Well, I think we should go inside. Uh, again, the dialogue seems like it goes too fast. One character talks, and then another, and then another. There's like no room to breathe. Curiously, the four squeeze through the half-open gate. Yeah, uh, squeeze? Uh, looks like they got through just fine to me. Wait for me. Shush, be quiet. Ow! <laughs> There's something buried. It was a little bag of... Gold! gold! Hooray, we're rich! Wait! First, we have to find out who this gold belongs to. <laughs> Free gold. Forget the house. Let's go deposit this. All right, so they go into the house, which, for some reason, has a bunch of hyper-realistic human portraits on the wall. What's with this? Why is that so detailed? The front door was open, allowing the four friends to make their way into the sitting room of the mysterious house. Let's look for some books. There aren't any here. Maybe there are some in the basement. Yeah, let's go find some books. That's my first thought whenever I break into somebody's house. Hmm, where are them books at? I gotta read. It's good you're a little blue bunny and not Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> <laughs> the books are near. 
I can already smell them. It was smell them? <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. What is it? What do you smell? Books. Wow! There's millions of books there! Wow, guys! Look at all the books! Ah! Oh ah, my god! They're alive! Such inspired lyrics. I think my favorite line is, read us, read us, read us, read us, read us, read us. Uh, no, I actually, no, I changed my mind. Uh, it's actually, read us, read us, read us, read us, read us, read us. Read us and become very smart. Understanding we will impart. Knowledge, wisdom, and intellect. From us you can all expect. And why aren't the other books dancing? Are they dead? I am a troll, as you can see! Taken by surprise, the four friends turned to face the troll, who stood in the doorway looking very annoyed. Yeah, that guy is totally a troll. Can't you tell by his kilt and, uh, uh, squirrel tail? Did you play the music? Music? Hogwash. I don't play music. I don't play at all. Trolls don't play anything. Only bagpipe, or doodle bag, or pipe doodle, or bag doodle pipe. What are you doing in my house? What? are you doing in my swamp? Yeah! Another song! Yeah. Yes, the mysterious has revealed Boundless is the magic here concealed So the movie claims to be inspired by Walt Disney and his songs, like the Disney classics from Aladdin and The Little Mermaid, but these songs are a far cry from that. They are so insanely boring and quite repetitive. Yes, the mysterious house revealed Boundless is the magic here concealed Yes, its secrets are for the wise The mysterious and delirious house of lies when the Scarlet Queen returns and I won't have no money or gold, then she'll beat me! She'll beat you? What kind of kids movie is this? So Stravinsky hears the sound of a cello and decides to investigate. His friends stay behind and he goes upstairs. Come, let's go and find it. No, I want to stay here. You can go, Stravinsky. Then you can tell us all about it. We will stay here. Okay, but don't do anything stupid. You stupid? So Stravinsky's walking through the house, and we get a feel for the decorations, the furniture, the textures, all of which are kind of meh. I mean, hey, it could be worse. Could be Joshua on the Promised Land. Excuse me, my dear cello, but could you tell me who was playing the music on you just now? Yes, you caught me at a bad time. I was playing with myself. Once in a while, I long for the sound of my favorite melodies, so I play them myself, as no one else will use me. Gently, the bow touch. Oh, don't step on it! It's very sensitive. Horse hair. Yeah, that sounds pretty sexual to me. But who made the tea? Did you do that? Oh, dearie, no. Have you ever seen a cello that drinks tea? Have you ever seen a cello drink tea? Or have big old bulging horse arms? With the glob glow gab glab. With the glob glow gab glab? But who is that? The Glob Glow Gab Glab, he's very big and looks like a big lump of penis. So Stravinsky hears his friends cry out and goes back to the basement. That's when we see him. Help! What's that? From one of the thick books, the Glob Glow Gab Glab slowly emerged. His massive body was like a large lump of dough that was fed by the thoughts and stories of the books. This guy just looks so awful. I mean, the character, the design, everything about him is just terrible. And for some reason, I, I can't look away. Also, this movie does not hold its punches. This guy is fat, and the movie will let you know. Slowly, his flabby, overweight body oozed from the book onto the basement floor. So apparently, this guy feeds on books, as in he will consume their thoughts and words and it adds to his massive bulk. And the way he does it is that he goes over the book and he, uh, he goes inside of it. And just as his fat body had fully covered the book, the Glob Glow Gab Galab became smaller and smaller 
until he was sucked into the book with the sound that gave him his name. Once inside, Stravinsky could hear the Globglo Gabgalab giggle and gobble. What the <laughs> and here it is. One of the greatest songs from the world of animation. I am the Globglo Gabgalab, the schwabble double wobble gobble flibber blah blah blah. I'm full of schwibble glibber kind. I am the yeast of thoughts and mind. Schwabble double glibber glabber schwibble schwab glab. Dibble double schwibble schwabble glibber glab schwab. Schwabble double glibber glabber schwibble schwab dab. Dibble double schwibble it's really creepy that the books are dancing around him. I mean, hey, maybe they like having him inside of them. <laughs> Just like yeast works its way through the dough to pass on its flavor, so I am nourished by the thoughts of these books. Ah, so he's a yeast infection. Ah, that makes much more sense. And out of nowhere, we hear about the Rat King. Like, up to this point, we have never heard of him. But now he's some imminent threat. Like, oh no, it's the Rat King. He's bad. Maybe somebody has kidnapped them. The Rat King or the Troll or somebody else. You're not serious, are you? You think the Rat King? It seems to me he's enchanted this house. Twaddle waddle, my dear Strawinsky. Stravinsky. Yes, 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 I know. But the Rat King, after all, I mean, he doesn't exist for real, does he? So Stravinsky finds his friends, who are frozen solid because they read some books. And just like the Rat King, all of a sudden, we hear about the Scarlet Queen. How she is very good and can save Stravinsky's friends. Ah, and we also get a deaf tone song as well. Scarlet Queen? <gasps> of all things, why the Scarlet Queen? Do we have to? Please. So this is when the movie gets kind of weird. I mean, uh, weirder. There's this bizarre message that books are bad. It, it, it doesn't really make any sense. They can't hear me. The books seem to have put them under a spell. It's just so important to be careful what you read. The Glob Glow Gap Galab wanted to cheer up Stravinsky and changed his shape into a large eagle. Behold, Stravinsky, I am a flesh eagle with flesh wings and flesh feathers. Let me touch you with them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god! What's happening? He then pulled his massive body through the gaping hole that his elephant body had torn in the ceiling. Oh my god, please, do not touch it. Oh, oh my god. Stravinsky managed to grab the Globlo Gabgalab's tail. Yeah, sure, his tail. What? What's that? The flooring, the beautiful floorboards, the expensive, valuable flooring. So the troll freaks out because of the hole in the floor, which is kind of weird because it's not even his house. If anything, the troll and the Globgo Gabgalab are a couple of squatters. Ah, if the Scarlet Queen comes, then we're all doomed. <sighs> doomed! Again, more Christian symbolism. And the great Elohim told me through her that I need to make a decision about whom I want to serve, him or the Rat King. The Scarlet Queen is very kind. If you trust her and tell her everything that is on your heart, then she will help you. She will go to the great Elohim and he will forgive you. She is patient and very this song again and really listen to the end it totally falls flat here's your life and we'll make you pure here's your life and we'll make you pure thank you stravinsky oh, jesus christ you scared the hell out of me the scarlet queen just pops out of nowhere but what can i do for you stravinsky my friends are downstairs in the basement they're like statues and don't move at all. They're like frozen. Could you please help them? Let's go and see. Oh, how sad. They really should have been more careful with these. 
They're too deeply immersed in these books. There are books that can captivate you, that even come directly from the Rat King and can enchant you if you're not careful. In the same way, there are some things in this world from which you'll be unable to free yourself. Okay, so at this point, we see some pretty heavy symbolism. The books are basically idolatry, as in, you're putting them above God. Oh, I'm sorry, Elohim. The Globglogabgalab used to be a beautiful forest elf lovingly created by the great Elohim. But he decided to make his own way, and in doing so, ended up discovering some magic books. He lost his slender form and became what he is now. Big and fat and slow. The Globgo Gabgalab used to be a beautiful elf, but now he's a big, fat, disgusting piece of flesh. Look upon him, my children, for he is disgusting. Look at him! Look upon him now! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! The Scarlet Queen began to lovingly stroke each of the three friends for a long time. Harold Spikes caused her hand to bleed, but she didn't seem to mind, even though one could see that she was in pain. Oh, her hands start to bleed? Eww, I hope she doesn't touch me with her bloody hands. I don't know where they've been. Immediately, the Queen struck each of the three books with her open palm, causing them to crumble into pieces. Out of the dust, three large rats emerged, and with ear-splitting screams and shrieks took flight. So, uh, apparently, those books were rats. Wait a second. Does that mean the glob go gab galab was going inside of rats? You were banging rats! <laughs> ah, gross. There, inside the wardrobe! The Rat King! Oh! That's just unfair. You always interfere with my plans. Just you wait. Sooner or later, I will defeat Great Elohim and crush you all. Just you wait. Just you wait. Just you wait. Oh, so uh, that's the Rat King. The guy everybody's afraid of. And he's like uh, uh, two feet tall. Tremble in fear, my child. Follow me into everlasting night. I am your fiercest foe. Oh, how frightful, terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. So what's going on with the other characters right now? Are they just uh, watching the song? Not gonna do anything about this guy? Just gonna let him get away? Yeah, there he goes. He got away. I am the true king. Whimpering and whining out of fear and anger, the Rat King disappeared. Eh, he wasn't whimpering. Again, the narration is incorrect. Okay, so this is when the movie comes full circle. The symbolism is saying that Elohim equals God, the Scarlet Queen is Jesus, the Rat King is Satan, the Globgo Gabgalab equals consumption and greed, and the books equal escapism and material goods, things that would distract you from God and having him as your number one goal in life. So yeah, the Christian symbolism definitely comes on pretty strong, and for those who aren't really down with that, this movie can be quite off-putting. I mean, the movie already has plenty of reasons why it's off-putting, but this kind of on-the-nose symbolism can really drive a general audience away. It works for Narnia, but uh, not here. Like, at all. So the Scarlet Queen floats away, the troll runs off with his gold, Stravinsky and his friends go back home, and the Globgo Gabgalab goes to a public library and has the freakiest orgy of all time. Waldo, I am so sorry. No! No! Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my top tier sponsors on Patreon. Toongren, Screenflare, Kaiser, Adam S, Chad Butler, Malkavio, Moondoggy, Illegally Sane, and Julius. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, that was a trip. So once again, I can appreciate David and the hard work he put into this film. He obviously had a goal and passion, but overall, it's just 
mm, not a good movie. I know that David said that this is episode three of the audio drama, but that shouldn't defend how confusing this movie is. There are moments where I had no idea what was going on. Oh, it's the Scarlet Queen, and also the Rat King, and Elohim, he's here too. And I'm like, who are these characters? Also, the camera angles are so distracting. They were constantly moving. Spooky. Come, let's look for some books. There aren't any here. Maybe there are some in the basement. What's with you and the books? I'd rather go and find the kitchen. I'm 99% sure that the pictures that they show during the credits are from the actual audio drama. So David's models don't look that far off from the original. But man, it still looks pretty rough. His massive body was like a large lump of dough that was fed by the thoughts and stories of the books. Overall, I applaud David and what he did. As in, I applaud his effort. Animation is not easy, and I really think it's cool that he taught himself how to animate and to basically make his own movie. I mean, I've seen movies from entire teams that look so much worse. But just because someone works hard on something does not mean it's immune from criticism, nor does it mean it's automatically perfect. Also, the message in this movie is, uh, a bit heavy. I appreciate Veggie Tales and the relaxed approach they take to God. They tell vegetable versions of biblical stories and then say that God loves you. But in this movie, it just comes across as a bit more preachy. And for a lot of people, that can be a major turnoff. But hey, I have an idea. What needs to happen is for David Hutter and Jim Lyon to team up to make the ultimate Christian animated film, one with naked lion children alongside a mole creature, one where Monkey Moses rides the Globgo Gabgalab into glorious battle against the Egyptians as he takes his Ten Commandments and throws them at the enemy to make sure that they never read a book again. It will be simply delicious. Mmm, splendid. Simply delicious. No! No! <laughs> <laughs>